come to his house. Hallelujah. We're going to get a part of it. Hallelujah. And he told Levan all these things, these things that were in covenant. This was supposed to happen. And Levan said to him, surely you are bone of my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him a space of a month. Levan said, you my, you my sister's son. Come in his house, man. He did. He, he acted like he was doing what he was supposed to do. Come in here. And after a month, then Levan said unto Yaakov, because you are my brother, we kinfolk, should you therefore serve me for not where, where the serving came in? Well, all of a sudden, I got to serve you. The biblical text, the Torah says that in the event your brother falls on hard times in the Torah, there's two things that you can either do. Whether it's your brother, whether it's a servant, whether it's a stranger, there's two ways to go about this when people fall on hard times. You can either take them in and treat them as a family member, that they have access to all that you have and you provide for them and they get an uh, uh, inheritance from you if something happens to you. You've, taught, you've brought them into your family, one. Or you put them to work for you. You put them to work for you for a fee until they get back on their feet and then they buy themselves out or if in seven years, they go home free. Two ways. Levon let him stay there for a month, then he's put him to work. At first it said, this is your mother's brother, your mother's brother. And Levon said unto Yaakov, because you are my brother, I'm going to do this for you just because you my my sister's son. You know, when you serve me, I ain't going to make you serve me for nothing. What you want? What's your wage? And Levon had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. These are the matriarchs. These are the progenitors of the 12. Leah was the tender eye, but Raquel was beautiful and well favored. She made that man jump off that camel and move a huge rock by herself. And Yaakov loved Raquel and said, I will serve you seven years for Raquel, your younger daughter. Seven years. Remember, what does seven mean? Completion. What else? Covenant. It's an oath. It's an oath. I'm giving you my word. I'm going to do this for seven years and I'm going to give you way much more than what I than what she's worth because she's much more valuable to me. All right. So here, here's the problem or here's the issue. Let's take a deeper look at Levon. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take you a woman from thence of the daughters of Levon, your mother's brother. Who else do we know from Aram? Think back. Maybe four Shabbats ago, we talked about altars. We talked about a donkey. We talked about people that were trying to curse Israel. Bilam is from Aram. Bilam, the prophet for money, the prophet for hire, the one who really, really, really want a bag. He trying to get rich. Now, they're both from the same place. I'm not saying that everybody from one area maintain the same ruach and move the same way and got the same character, but I'm saying it's been known to happen. People from Galveston, you know people from Galveston. People from certain parts of Houston, you know how they get down. You know what to expect. Sometimes there is a ruach or a principality over a certain region. Not sometimes, all the time. So I wanted to bring that comparison to you. And what type of man was Bilam? He was a man of greed. He wasn't a man of principle. He wasn't a man of moral fiber. He prostituted his gift. All right. A deeper look at Levon. Now, the first time we're mentioned of Levon is when he almost had the same exact experience with his sister. A man comes from across town and wants his sister, and his sister was Rivka. And Rivka and her brother, and his name was Levan. And Levan ran out onto the man. He ran out onto the man. He always want that money. He going to run to it. Onto the well. It was probably the same well. And it came to pass when he saw the earrings and the bracelets upon his sister's hand, he saw that man had some money. This man was important. This man come with gifts. What'd he do? 
And he and when he heard the words of Raka, Rivka, his sister, saying, Thus spoke the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, you blessed of Yahuwah. Come in. Come in, Bala. Money alert. Come in. Sit down. He stood by the camels at the well and said, Come in, you blessed of Yahuwah. Wherefore stand you without? Don't stand out there. Come in here. I made a place for you. I prepared something for you. Come get comfortable so I can trick you out of some of this money if I can. This is Levon. Then Levon and Bethuel. Bethuel is Rivka's father. This is Levon's father. And as we know the customs in our community and in, in antiquity, there was no dating. There was no such thing as a date. There was no such thing as we getting to know one another. Every union was done through the parents, through the authority. So a man would see a woman that he likes, he's not speaking to her. He's going to go to his father and say, Pop, can you get her for me? Not get her like he's going to take her or steal her, but to take her meant to leg legally go and speak to the parents and create a ketubah and figure out how we can make this thing work. It was social benefit. It was economic benefit. It was for the benefit of the family to do it that way. Now you know what you're getting into. There's nothing that's going to hinder us from doing something in secret. And then I've hurt you. You've hurt me. So the way that it was done, the fathers would have conversation. They would make agreement. And if the agreement was settled on both parties, then the father of the young lady, he would come to her and say, baby, what you think about him? And she'd be like, daddy, no, it was over with. The daughter has to agree. The daughter, ha it has to be pleasing to the daughter as well. It wasn't forced. It was arranged, but it was not forced. If she said no, it was a no-go. Here, take back your little stuff going out the way. My daughter don't want you. And stop. She don't want you. So, and stop. So, now we see that Levon and Bethuel answered and said, why is Levon answering? This is the responsibility of the parents, the father and the mother. But he all in the mix. He's all in their business. And Levon and Bethuel answered and said, the things proceeds from Yahuwah. We cannot speak unto you bad or good. Behold, Rivka is before you. Take her and go and let her be your Adonis son's woman, as Yahuwah has spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard these words, he worshiped Yahuwah bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rivka now. When they had a dowry, the dowry was for the bride. It's not for the family. It's given to the husband or the father, I mean, so that he may give it to his daughter. And whatever they gave, whether it was something of uh, monetary, whether it was cattle, whether it was land, anything of value, it was for her and nothing was done with it outside of her knowledge. It was a safety for her. It was safety for her in the event this man don't do right. Because now you've been with this man in our culture, another man wasn't gonna value the same, so now you got some cushion. If you need to, you can start your business. If y'all had children, now you got inheritance for your children, because this man wasn't acting right. So the dowry was always for the daughter. It was given to the family or to the, to the, to the father to give to the daughter, to keep it safe. And whenever she needed something, it was hers to do with it. It's not mine. Hallelujah. So, Abraham's servant heard the words. He worshiped Yahuwah, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rivka. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Brother shouldn't have been receiving nothing. He didn't have nothing to do with it. He put himself in the business and got him a little out of it. Now, this is what I want you to have the understanding. We see what Levon did even with his sister. How much more do you think he did with his daughter, his children, what type of man that he was? Now, when we read this, we have to have the understanding that Yaakov was sent to this place. Why was he sent to this man? This is what I want you to understand. Yaakov came out with a blessing through what he even perceived as trickery. He didn't want to do it. Now, the Most High Yah is strategic. Though the strategy was such, 
he don't want you to get familiar with that. He don't want you to have a taste of that in your mouth. He don't want you to continue to try to operate in that in your own strength, not knowing that it was the most high yah and only him, but that was the strategy that he chose to use. So he gonna put you in a position where you gonna get tricked. See how I feel? Humble you. Humble your heart. See how it feels? Watch what your uncle do to you. Watch how your uncle misuse you. I don't want you to think that that was done in your own strength and you get used to operating like that. I want you to operate in righteousness. That was the strategy that I had for you because that man that you're dealing with. But I don't want you to get used to operating like this. So get a little taste of this. Now, what did LeVon do? You're going to have to read to find out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Torah portion is finished. Hallelujah. Hua. The next voice you will hear will be that of Moray Dawi, continuing on part two. Continuing on part two of the offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, oh, that was a good story right there. You know, we always uh, pick up on the Torah portion. Especially in better sheets, better sheets is always deals with the beginning, always deals with the first of everything. And we can always take life lessons from our book as we repossess our book from our our ancestors, from our fathers to understand how we should operate and how we should move. Hallelujah. Um, today we are definitely picking up back on part two of the Korban of the offering. And we definitely want to make sure that as uh, last time we talked about the Korban, this is uh, something that will, it's not a quick lesson. This is nothing that is going to be a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am type of lesson. This is not the type of lesson where we just tell you and that's what it is without study. This is the type of lesson that we must dive into continually to make sure, one, we have a complete understanding of what it is that the Most High is designed for us dealing with the Korban or with the offering. Number two, um, dealing with the Korban. As you know how we are here at Beshima Torah, we don't beat nobody over their head. We don't ask. We don't deal with people when it comes to financial things. It should be something that is on you. It should be a heartstring on you if you want to sow seed or if you want to bring an offering to this. So it would be, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you the purpose of teaching on the offering is not for us. The purpose on teaching on the offering is for you. It is beneficial for whoever needs to understand and know what it means to be an offerer what it means to be kingdom minded, what it means to stand in the place of one who is seeking the will of the creator. So with that being said, we will deal with the carbon. Drawing near to Abba, our creator. Just gonna click that screen one good time. Bang, continuing the carbon. We're gonna do a recap from last Shabbat. Did, you, did everybody take notes? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, Mora. I'll slow it down. Do my best to slow it down. I got some slides in here. We got a lot of reading to do. Um, we're going to deal with the reading of the word because when we read the word, we understand the word. The scripture says it's the word that destroys the yoke. Not us in ourself. It's Yahuwah's word that destroys the yoke. Just the mute button on number two. All right. So first, last uh, Shabbat we dealt with, each encounter with Yah caused an offering. Would anybody like to expound on what those encounters was that we touched on from the biblical text? Anybody, anybody, Moray, Moray included. Anybody? Uh-uh, don't, uh-uh, don't, don't. <laughs> okay, Moray said Yaakov. What did we see with Yaakov? The ladder, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who else? He poured out a drink offering. He poured out a carbon, all right? Anybody else? What we seen uh, last Shabbat uh, with the lesson? All right. We talked about each encounter with Yah caused an offering. Who encountered Yah that caused the offering? 
Yitzchak, Morris said Yitzchak, when he moved out, he had an encounter with Yah and he presented an offering. And then our father, Abraham, every encounter of our patriarchs caused them to build an altar, a place of exchange. And then they made an offering. Hallelujah. How many offerings are lined out for us that we talked about last Shabbat? All right. Can anybody tell me those five offerings? Sin, burn, trespass, grain, and the peace. Can you say those in the Ivri tongue? Sin. <laughs> I go to Jerry said, no. <laughs> I got you. It's all good. The Chata'a is the sin. Okay. Asham is the trespass. Ola is the burnt offering. Shalem is the peace. The meek high. So is the grain offering. So also when we're dealing with the biblical text, when we put it back in the Ivri tongue, when we say these words of what they are, instead of reading it in the English, we have a better understanding of what kind of offering it was, meaning sin was a mandatory offering, meaning you cannot come to the place the altar, the place of exchange without presenting a sin offering. The, the asham, the trespass, you cannot come to the altar. This is the altar. You cannot come to the altar to draw near to Abba Yahuwah without doing uh, that which is uh, prescribed for the trespass. And then everything else was a voluntary act of worship. That means that my heart is lined up with you and I'm going to bring you the best of the best. What kind of offering was it that uh, uh, Cain and Abel or Cain and Havel brought to the Most High? Which offering was that? Do we remember? The grain or the mincha? Hallelujah. And what was the difference between the offering? Posture. More, more kind of Yahoo said posture. The attitude. What else, more? One was the first. One brought the fat of the land, the best of the best, all right? And one didn't. Hallelujah. And also, what is the purpose of the Korban? So I, I did a little backwards thing so that we can get to, we're going to go backwards and forth. So what was the purpose of the Korban? To draw closer to Yahuwah. If Yahuwah is over there and he laid out a prescription to say, do X, Y, then Z, if you want to get to me. Why did we need to get to Abiyah? Because in the garden, we see that there was a disconnect by the actions of Adam. So the Most High Yah set up a system of drawing near to me. So we have to be reminded that the Korban is not just giving an offering, not just moving in a place where uh, you said, do it, I'm going to do it. No, it's so that we can get to him. Because in the presence of Yah, we have the fullness of joy. In the presence of Yah, we have peace. In the presence of Yah, we have provisions. In the presence of Yah, we have abundance. In the presence of Yah, nothing outside of him can destroy us. He is our provider. He is our protector. Hallelujah. All right. Boom. Now, the root of Korban is Korab. Once again. We have the kuf right in the base. And this is the etymological uh, dictionary of the of biblical Hebrew. <laughs> and it simply means to come close. Remember, korban means to come close. And I always want to make sure when we're dealing with the offering, when we present an offering, no matter what it is, the goal of the offerer is to draw near to the, the Most High Yah, to the one you're giving the offering to. If I bring my my brother, Morik Kanayahu, an offering, it's because I'm trying to draw near to him to let him know, look, man, you're my aunt, you're my brother, I love you. Here's an offering. Here's this. Here's that. This is the goal of the offerer, to draw near, to show those who you are in covenant with that I have a certain type of affection for you from my heart. The offering is always a heart move. It's always about your heart, all right? How often is the offering presented? Shemotes, Exodus 29, 37, 38. It says, seven days you shall make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it. 
and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which you shall offer upon the altar. Two lambs of the first year, when? Day by day, continually. Hallelujah. Uh, just click it one more time, Roy. Continued on. It says, the one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at evening. And with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And at the other lamb you shall offer at evening and shall do thereto according to the oblation of the morning and according to the drink offering there for a sweet savor and offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. He's giving you the prescription. This is when the priests were consecrated in Shemot, when the Most High gave Moshe the, the, the plans on how you get the priests in line. When the priests are set up, then this is what I need you to do day by day, continually, morning and night. The offering was so serious that they needed an offering day and night so that the people would be able to draw near to their Yah. Hallelujah. This shall be a continual ascending smoke offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah where somebody else will meet you. Who's going to meet you there? He says, I, I, Yahuwah will meet you to speak there unto you. So remember, when we talk about the korban, the offering, when the offering was presented, it was so that we could get to a place with Ab so that he would meet us and speak to us. Hallelujah. Now, for this lesson, we'll deal with the points of focus concerning the offering. When Yahuwah asks for the offering, he will provide it first for you. But you must have faith. All day long, we will be dealing with the heart of the offerer. If Yahuwah asks for it, he wants to see what your heart going to do. If Yahuwah asks for it, that means he has already given you the provisions to bring the offering forth. If Yahuwah says, give it to me, I want it, trust and believe that he has a plan for you. But what does your heart say when it's time to bring the offering? If you break the relationship with Yahuwah, he, dis he disregards your offering. Now, remember, the offering is to draw near. What if we're bringing our offering to the Most High? And he says, mm, no, nah, I don't want you by me. I don't know. You can't draw near to me. I don't accept your offering. I'm not going to do it. Been in a situation like that plenty of times. Then had some that made some people mad, and I tried to bring gifts, bearing gifts, knocking at the door. And, uh uh, I'm mad at you. You can't even come in with it. Don't even do it. Take it back to Walmart. Because <laughs> that's where I was getting it from. That's what I knew. Maurice, see, my heart, my heart, I wasn't getting it from Zales. I was getting it from Walmart. It was my heart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it was where my heart was, the offering, you know what I mean? Hallelujah. <laughs> and then last, what is the Taruma offering? So this is one of the other offerings that I wanted to bring out last time, but we were moving according to time. I didn't want to waste too much time, but I wanted to come ahead for this one, and we're going to talk about the Taruma. We here in the Hebraic community, we talk about the Taruma. The reason why we talk about these different offerings is because, one, last week we talked about how um, the Roman Catholic Christianity, how these people um, perverted Abba Yahuwah's ways, and they had it to where they would make people always give this money, give, 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 give. It became a focal point at one point in time, prosperity, and all they wanted was your money. And so now we have a bad taste in our mouth about even concerning talking about offering because the way people perverted the offering, but not understanding that this was Yah's way to get his people to draw near to him. So now we'll talk about the Teruma. All these other offerings were, uh, were Levitical offerings, but the Teruma offering is another offering on top of every other offering. 
to Roma offerings. Shemot, go ahead, Maury. Go ahead and read for me, uh, please. Shalom, shalom. Shemot 25, 1 through 2. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, that they bring me a teruma of every man that gives it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my teruma. You shall take your own teruma. My teruma. It is Yahuwah's teruma. And he tells Moshe, when we get into Shemot 25, 1 and 2, now, when you read it in the English, it'll just say offering. And this is the purpose of putting it back in the Ivrit so we understand what kind of offering we're looking at. He says, bring me a teruma. And he wants you to do it willingly of your heart. The purpose that it must be done willingly of your heart because it's not just dealing with your cattle. It's not just dealing with your land. It's not just dealing with your produce. It's also dealing with your finances. And this, this right here, this thing right here, this offering was definitely a heart-motivated offering. How you feel when you come before the presence of Abba Yah. Hallelujah. So we'll take a take a look at Taruma. This is uh this is the uh Strong's for 8641 for anybody who's taking notes. H 8641. Taruma. The outline biblical usage of the Taruma. Right here, it's a contribution. It's an offering. This is something that you contribute. This is something that you give freely of yourself. It's a heave offering. Any offering. An offering to, it says God, but we know it's Elohim. And an offering of grain, money, etc. A contribution. When we look at the Brown Driver Brig lexicon right here, it says for sacred uses. Right here, it says lift it off or separate it. This offering is a separate offering on top of every other offering that you got. Hallelujah. And as we look at the etymological dictionary of biblical Hebrew, <laughs> the root of Teruma, the root of Teruma is Resh Wav Mim. Rum. This is the root of it. Resh Wav Mim. Rum. And I'm just going to give you, I'm not going to go through and we're not going to give you the complete breakdown uh, because we can, but I want to make sure that I give you just the, the simple understanding of it so that later when we come back to talk about this, then we can dive deeper because this is a, a, a lesson that we can do on and on and on to draw us closer to Yah. So it means to elevate for an exalted goal. Remember that the teruma means that you are elevating for an exalted goal. It is a separate offering from the burnt, the sin, uh, the trespass, the peace, the grain, and what's the other one? Yeah, I missed one. Okay, she don't remember. Okay, I said them all. I was just say I was testing her. This is a this is a, a different offering. This is a higher offering. This is one that's going to be bring you bring for an, an exalted goal. It says to elevate for an exalted goal. We want to be elevated. That's what the teruma is. Hallelujah. So the purpose of the teruma is a voluntary act of worship. This is something that you do from your heart. The most I say, do it. I need you to bring this. It's a teruma unto me. Bring it. All right. Contribution or offering above any other offering. And it's an act of devotion, commitment, and total dependency on Yahuwah. Sometimes Yahuwah will make you come with whatever you got. He'll make you say, give me this as a teruma. He'll set something in place and say, I want this. Now it's on you to see if you truly depend on Yah, and I'm going to bring this offering before you. Yahuwah might make you offer your car. Yahuwah might make you offer uh a bag. He might make you offer your food in your cabinet just to see how you depend on me. Now, once again, it's how you draw near to Yah. It's an elevated for, an, it says uh, to elevate for a uh, purpose, for exalted goal. Hallelujah. Contributions for the tabernacle. We'll start here at uh, Shemot 35, 4 and 5. Go ahead, Maury. 
Shemot 35, 4 and 5. Hallelujah. And Moshe spoke unto all the assembly of the children of Yasharel, saying, This is the thing which Yahuwah commanded, saying, Take ye from among you and teruma unto Yahuwah, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, and teruma of Yahuwah, gold and silver and brass. Right here, we're seeing what the Most High has told Moshe in the book of Shemos. It's a contribution for the tabernacle. When they came out of Mitzrayim, the Most High gave them specific instructions on how to build a tabernacle. The tabernacle was the place where the Most High said, I will come and I will meet you there. So as I come to meet you there, I want my tabernacle built like this. I don't want my tabernacle built like the heathens or the nations built their tabernacle. I don't want my tabernacle built like uh, like like the Baal worshipers and all these different pagan worshipers. I want you to build a tabernacle just for me. That way, when the people come into the land and they see this tabernacle, they know that you have a Kodesh Elohim. The people will start seeing how you worship your Yah. People see that you give your Yah your best. People will see and they will want to know or inquire about your Elohim. Why? Because in our mission, we tell you for all nations, to afford all nations. But first, we must serve him right. Hallelujah. All right. Go ahead, Moray. It says, during Hezekiah's reform. Second Chronicles 31. One through two, hallelujah. Now when all this was finished, all Yasharel that were present went out to the cities of Yahuda and broke the images in pieces and cut down the Asherah poles and threw down the high places and the altars out of all Yehuda and Benjamin and Ephraim also and Manashish unto they had utterly destroyed them all. Then all the children of Yasharel returned, every man to his possession into their own cities. So a little backdrop right here, what we're looking at right here, we have different kings. After, uh, after King Solomon, after the nation split, we see that there were different kings from the north and the south. And you had kings that did evil in the sight of the Most High, and then you had kings that did righteous in the sight of the Most High. But there was one, Hezekiah, when he became the king, he opened up the Torah. He said, this is what Yah said. This is what we will do. And this is why it says Hezekiah's reform. He reformed the whole nation. He opened up the Torah and he said, the Torah says, this is what we're going to do. And this is why people look at us a little strange because we say, this is what the Torah says. And this is what we won't do. This is what we're going to do. Here at Besh and my Torah, we want to follow what the Torah says. It, it ain't no way to spin it. There ain't no way to put nothing off. If Yah says keep the Shabbat, man, we got to keep the Shabbat. Ain't no ands if a bust about it. We can't compromise. If Yah says do it like this, we got to do it like that. No ands if a buts. We can't compromise. So this is what's going on in the land at the time during Hezekiah's reform. Hallelujah. All right. And yet, <laughs> yet Kizikiah, Hezekiah, appointed the courses of the priests and the Levi'im after their courses, every man according to his service, the priests and the Levi'im, for ascending smoke offerings and for peace offerings to minister and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of Yahuwah. Now, mind you, the priesthood was out of pocket. They were out of play. Everybody was uh, doing what seemed right in their own eyes. But when Hezekiah, Yekizikiah, <laughs> yeah, oh, I said it right. Look, Yekizikiah, <laughs> when Hezekiah, when he seen it, he started, he put everybody back in their position. He put the priest back in the position. And now he said, let's redo the offering. Hallelujah. Now let's take a look and see what happens. Second Chronicles 31, 3 through 6, hallelujah. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the ascending smoke offerings, to wit, for the morning and evening ascending smoke offerings, and the ascending smoke offerings for the Shabbat, and for the new moons, and for the feasts, as it is written in the Torah of Yahuwah. 
Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Lewayim that they might be encouraged in the Torah of Yahuwah. Hold on. So right here it says, Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in the land of Jerusalem. He commanded them, you bring your portion to the priests so that the priests would be encouraged. Why? Because we always needed a mediator. Man, the people who's doing the work and the will of the Most High, they, they were the mediators. They stood, they stood and talked to the Most High for the people and talked to the people for the Most High, long as they were righteous priests. And as he said this, he said, bring this so that we can encourage them. Why? Because we need them. We need these men standing in their place so that we can draw near to the Most High Yah. All right. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Yasserel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain, wine, and oil, and honey, and of all the incense of the field, and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. And concerning the children of Yasserel and Yehuda, that dwell in the cities of Yehuda, they also brought in the tithe of the oxen and the sheep and the tithe of the holy things which were consecrated unto Yahuwah Elohim and laid them by heaps. They brought everything. They brought it all. The people were in union with the, with the king. They were in union at Chad with the priests. They were in union with everything in the city and they brought it all. Nobody held without they brought it was a heart string think about this the most high had already commanded and he set up this ordinance from of old from the torah now these people are starting to do this thing in the torah and as they're setting it up we begin to see what takes place in the land and this is one of the greatest reforms that you read about in the biblical text when you read about hezekiah he's one of the greatest kings um according to the biblical text underneath david hallelujah 31, 7 and 9. Second Chronicles 31, 7 and 9. In the third month, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finish them in the seventh month. And when Yekiziaku, Yekizikiya, Hezekiah, and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed Yahuwah and his people, Yasharel. Then Yekizikiyahu questioned the priests and the Lewayim concerning the heaps. Remember, they brought all of this i want you to be mindful this is evening thought this is how people have taken the evening mind and the evening thought and how we should move and they perverted this but this is how we move in the kingdom nobody keeps things to themselves in the kingdom and the kingdom we are of service to one another if i don't have and you got you bless me and when i got i bless you this is how we supposed to move at high this was the way that the most high set us up from the beginning that we were supposed to be dependent upon one another because our nation was to put, to be a great nation there is no greatness with people who are prideful. There are no greatness to people who are selfish. There's no greatness for people who are jealous. This was the greatness of our people. And then Yekizkiahu questioned with the priest and the level E concerning the heaps. He came, he seen the piles. He said, man, what? Man. He said, what's going on? All right. Second Chronicles 31, 10 through 12, hallelujah. And Azariahu, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the Teruma into the house of Yahuwah, we have had enough to eat and have left plenty, for Yahuwah has blessed his people. And that which is left is the great store. It's the what? The great store. Everything that the, listen, 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 listen. We must get to a place as a people where we are dependent upon each other. This is how we get out of the system. We always talk about breaking from the Babylonian system, breaking from this. We cannot do this by ourselves. It takes a nation to join together to break from this system. This is the evening mind. This is the evening thought. 
This is how we do it. And when you have righteousness in place, when the king is righteous, the city, the nation flourishes. Hallelujah. When the people who serve Yah are righteous, this is when the nation flourishes. And this is why you have mores who have accountability. Hallelujah. If your priest or your pastor or your more or your teacher don't have a certain level of accountability, then you need to be checking what's going on. We have to be accountable to the things of Yah. Why? Because none of us are, are immune to the ways of the flesh. Hallelujah. Any one of us can step out of the will of the Most High Yah and not be pleasing to the Creator. Nobody, nobody, no, I don't care who they are, nobody is immune to it. All right? Uh, then you... Th then you kiss Yahoo. Ha ha. Commanded to prepare chambers in the house of Yahuwah. And they prepared them and brought in the taruma and the tithes and the dedicated things faithfully, over which Kanayahu, the Lewi, was ruler, and Shimi, his brother, was the next. Now, mind you, remember, I'm going to make sure that I continue to tell you, if we don't teach this, we will be doing the mishpacha a disservice. This is a disservice to whoever hears this. Whoever's going to watch this, if you don't understand the kingdom way, the kingdom mind, or the kingdom principle, this is a disservice to you. We apologize for other people who perverted Yah's way, but this is Yah's way, how we move forward. Once again, you'll never hear us beat nobody over the head over the offering because the offering is on you. When we seen the people um, who went out for immersions this morning, the immersions, we didn't make the people go. This was on you. This was your desire. It was on you. And boy, before you got down, you, uh, Maury Kanayahu said, this is what you want, right? And they said, yes. Boom. Now they went down. It is all of yourself. We must have the mind of the evening. And this is the purpose of understanding the offering. The offering is a heart check and it's not for us. It's to draw near to the most high. It's to draw near to our creator. Hallelujah. Click it one time. One time. Go ahead. When Yah asks for the offering, he wants to see your heart. Now we'll take a little, we'll take a little time and we'll kind of speed things up because we should all know this story, but we're going to read it again. Hallelujah. Go ahead, More. That is sheet 22, one through two. And it came to pass after these things, the Elohim did try Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. Here I am. The most high spoke. Abraham answered, here I am. All right. And he said, take now your son, your Yahid, Yitzchak, come, excuse me, whom you love and get you into the land of Moriah and offer him there as an ascending smoke offering or Olah upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you of. The Most High said, now remember, if the Most High asked for it, it's because he had already given it to you. He said, your Yahid, your only begotten. This word here says that, he, that Yitzchak was his only begotten, but we know that Ishmael was his firstborn. But this is the son of the covenant, your only begotten, the one who I spoke from days of old and told you that this would be the covenant between me and you and that your seed would be numerous, more numerous than the stars in the sky and the sand on the ground. This was the one that the Most High gave him in the beginning. Now the Most High gave him his son. Now he's asking for his son back. Can you give me what I gave you? I gave you in abundance. I gave you this thing. Now, can you give it back to me? Are you willing to give this back to me? Remember, this is a voluntary act. The Ola is a voluntary act. It is, a, it is to show your dedication, and it also is to show your heart. Remember, we're dealing with the heart. What is your heart? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you're going to be either one or the other. You're either going to be obedient to Abba Yahuwah or disobedient to Abba Yahuwah. Obedience and how it looks. Can whoever uh, is unmuted, can you please mute your mics? Please check and see and mute the mic. Toda. Obedience and how it looks. 
This is Abraham's obedience. And we'll continue. This is verse 3 in the same chapter, what we were reading. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and ate Yitzchak, his son, and clave the wood for the ascending smoke offering and rose up and went unto the place of which Elohim had told him. Now he moves. This is obedience. He was not disobedient. Abraham seen it as this. You gave me this boy who wasn't a boy at the time. This was actually a grown man. You gave me this here, and now I heard you. You are the one who can give me anything. You can do all that I can even imagine, above all that I can imagine. You're asking for them back. I'm going to give them back to you. He was obedient to the point that he was going to go and he was going to take the life or offer his son as an ola, an ascending smoke offering. Why? Because the ascending, it was like stairs, and I'm trying to get higher unto you. Show that again. Huh? How, how was it? It was, uh, uh. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, watch yourself. Yes, sir. <laughs> but he was obedient to what Elohim told him. Man, that's how we do. We got to have fun. We got to make it fun. Click it one more time, Maury, so I can go on through. Forgive me. It's okay. 22, 8, and 13, later on in the scripture. Go ahead. This is the same chapter, but a little further down. Hallelujah. And Abraham said, my son, Elohim will provide himself a lamb for an ascending smoke offering. So they went both of them together. Elohim will provide. Remember, if he asks for it, that means he will provide it. If he's asking you for it, he's going to already make sure that I'm preparing something for you so that you can give it back to me. Abba Yahuwah gives us the best. What is it? How the scripture says, uh, the earth is Yahuwah's and the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He is the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. All of abundance, he owns it. And he gives it to you. I want some of it back. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And they came to the place which Elohim had told of him, told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Yitzchak his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. It's my heart. For I real. build an altar here. It's bruised and scarred, but still. I build an altar here. His heart was Yitzchak. Mm. This is my heart. But still, I build an altar here. The altar is the place of exchange. Mesbeach. The place where we exchange with the Most High. Oh, good. Hallelujah. So remember, let's go a little further. Go ahead. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of Yahuwah called unto him out of the heavens and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do you anything unto him. For now I know that you fear Elohim, seeing you have not withheld your son, your Yahi, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for an ascending smoke offering in the stead of his son. Hallelujah. If the Most High asks for it, it is our choice to be obedient or disobedient, but it would behoove us to be obedient to the ways of the Most High Yah. Yeah. Go ahead. Because Abba Yahuwah is faithful. And remember, this is a heartstring. 
this is a hard string. The most high will say things to you and cause you to provide for him an offering. And when he asks you for an offering, when he asks you for an offering, he expects to you to give it to him. I know a man who was the sole provider of his house. And he said, the most high told me to move this way. And what I'm going to do is he asked me to give my job up. Now, mind you, this man went to school for years. The most high has blessed him, blessed him financially, blessed him mentally, blessed his hands in a lot of things. And he was the provider of his family. And the most high said, that thing which I gave you, that mind and everything that I gave you to bless your house and to be the head of your house, I want you to give that to me. And it seems strange to everybody else. That thing seems strange to everybody else. You understand me? It seems strange to people who don't hear from the most high. But this man was so convinced. He was so convinced. I was made up, man. This is the creator asking me to do this. And people were like, well, how dare you to do that? But he believed in his heart like Abraham. Man, I believe this is Abiyah. I believe and uh, watch this man as he moved out in the ways of the Most High Yah. And I watched how the Most High blessed him beyond measure and continued to elevate him and continued to make him the head of his house and continued to provide for him, even to the point where it showed me, myself, you who is no respect of a person. Guess what I did? I jumped in that line. <laughs> I got in that line. I got in that line because why? Man, the most high, he don't, man, he, oh, it's the heart. I see your heart and guess what? People who watched it and believed it, they seen that heart. And people who jumped in line on it, the blessings start following those people as well. The blessing followed those people as well. The Most High wants to see your heart. Give your offering to the Most High in whatever Abba asked for. Hallelujah. Creating me a clean heart, O Elohim. Let's take a take a uh a gander at what Melek Dawi uh, wrote down. This is Psalms 51, and it's dealing with after he had uh, fornicated with Bathsheba and after he was found out. This is a psalm that came out of that. He wrote this song, and he began to talk to the Most High. Go ahead, Maury. To Helene, 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O Elohim, and renew a right ruach within me. Create in me a clean heart. What does this have to do with an offering? Why do you have to have a clean? It says, create in me a clean heart and renew the right ruach. I need a right spirit on how I move concerning all that I do, including an offering. Go ahead. To Helene 51, 11 through 15. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your ruach hakodesh from me. Restore unto me the joy of your Yeshua and uphold me with your free Ruach. Then will I teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be turned back unto you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Elohim Elohai, of my Yeshua. And my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness, O Adonai. Open my lips and my mouth shall you show forth your praise. Now, my mouth will show forth your praise once I got a right screw out and I got a clean heart, all right? Now, check this out. We're dealing with the offering, but we want to know we got to have a clean heart and a right rule out. To Helene, 51, 16 through 18, hallelujah. For you desire not sacrifice, else would I give it. You delight not in ascending smoke offering. Wait a minute. The most high don't delight in the ascending smoke offering? He don't require, a, he don't desire the sacrifice? But I thought he told the people to bring me a sacrifice. I thought he told the people, bring me the offering. Bring me a burnt offering so that you could draw near to me. But Dawid says, you don't desire that. Why don't he desire? Because of my heart. Mm. I don't want it if your heart ain't in it. I don't desire it, really. It's for you to come near to me. It's for you to come up here and be in my presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken ruach and a broken and contrite heart. O Elohim, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure unto Zion. Build the walls of Yerushalayim. Then shall you be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, what? with ascending smoke offerings and whole ascending smoke offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon your altar. Then, and only then, is your offering acceptable in my sight. If you have the right ruach within you, we must draw nigh unto Abba Yehoah. We must daily check our heart. We must daily check the things that we are doing and how we come before a Kodesh Elohim. How we deal with our brethren. How we deal with our Kotis. How we deal with our Isha. And how we deal with our Isha. Create in me a clean heart that I may worship thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the relationship is broken, Yahuwah refuses the offering. Hallelujah. Man, I'm a break man. If we ain't right, if I clean, if our heart ain't clean, Yahuwah will refuse the offering. But yes, look at him. He went and got his offering. All right. We got an offering here. Go and take them out the bag. Take them out the bag. Don't uh -uh, just take some out the bag. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Maury. Yeah, please take it off the screen share. Just uh, uh, escape it and stop share real quick. Hold on, put your put your offerings. Can can and put the camera on the table. Put your camera on the table, please, so that we can see the altar. This is our makeshift altar. Here we go. You can see it. Can y'all see it on the Zoom? Thumbs up. Some fire emojis. We can see it. All right. Mm, you got your you get you a couple more cans. Get you a couple more cans. That's your offer. That's your this your offer right here, Maury. Yeah. Bring your offer. Bring your offer. All of it. Bring your offering too. Uh-uh. I need I need both of y'all. Bring your offering. Bring your offering. Now the most high said to, this is gonna be the uh offering table. The most high has already given us now. Now, before you come before the altar, how do you come before the altar with your offering? You come to the altar with your offering? And I am not worthy outside of you, O Abba Yahuwah. Please accept my offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the most high. Easy. This is just for, this is, all right. Anybody else want to stand in the stand of Maury? Maury Lester. Because this is how the Most High says, okay, I don't know, come on back. Come on back. I accept your offer. Now, come on. The Most High, yeah. Now he pulls you in. Now he, he he's your friend. He loves on you. I protect you. Now, what do you need? Now, boom. I'm going to put it back in your hand. I'm going to put it back in your hand. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it back in your hand. Because your heart was right. Your heart was right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now your heart was right hallelujah hallelujah and so for those who are watching your heart yeah so, <laughs> so his heart was right and the most high brings you in then the most high blesses you it's an exchange because i already gave it to you first and you brought me the best all he had was his two he didn't have nothing else. He gave me the best that he had. This is all I got. I'm not worthy. Here's my offer. The most I accepted his offer, and he gave him more. Come on, Maury. Bring your offering. <laughs> Come on, bring, so your heart ain't right. That's why it's good. Bring your offering. Now you come, you come like 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 those heathens that just come, that just bring it. Hold on, give them the mother offer. Give them, give them the, yeah, give them the other ones. Look, look, see, look, look, they, uh huh, see, I, man, look, he set it up just fine. Ew, you got plenty, so you just go, you you just gonna show off because you got plenty, huh? Oh, so you just got where well, you told me to bring. Oh, he got plenty. I'm just gonna show off. 
Ain't, ain't no adoration in that. Okay, we're gone. Go your way. Ain't no adoration in that. Ain't no adoration in that. The Most High says, that's how you bring your offering to me? I don't want your offering. I don't want it. Keep your little funky offering. Don't bring nothing else to me. Don't bring nothing else to me. Our relationship is broken. Why would you bring that to me like that? Why is your heart like that? We ain't going to eat nothing tonight. And guess what? Now that you done brought your offering to me like that in disrespect, guess what? I'm going to allow the devourer to devour everything that you have. We must get this. And it's not just money. It's our time. It's how we deal with each other, how we serve in the ministry, how we serve in the things that we do, how we treat each other. Everything that we do is in the army going back and get it stuff. <laughs> now you're good. Oh, you're good. That is how the most high is going to deal with us. This is the every thought, the every mind, the Hebrew concept. Let's get our mind frame on what we desire or what Abba Yahuwah desires. Can you pull that uh, PowerPoint back up? Hallelujah. Did that paint the picture? That was some force, huh? I'll put that big arm on it. <laughs> ah, there we are. Hallelujah. We'll be done shortly. I just want to make sure that we understand this concept and what we're doing. All right. It says, when the relationship is broken, Yahuwah refuses the offering. Now, check it out. We're dealing with your heart. How do you present your offering to the Most High? It is a heart string offering. Everything that you do, besides those two mandatory offerings, the sin and the trespass, everything else is a voluntary act of worship. Everything else is a voluntary act of worship. Everything else is how your heart is. It's voluntary. You come to me by yourself. You come to me alone. Can't nobody else get you closer to me. So come, come to me so that we can reason together. Yemiyahu 14 and 12. More. Yemiyahu, Jeremiah 14 and 12. Hallelujah. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer an ascending smoke offering and an ablation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Once the relationship is broken, I ain't going to accept nothing from you. Once the relationship is broken, I'm going to do all. I'm going to allow everything, everything that you want, everything that you're looking for, you're going to get it. Everything that you've been asking for, you're going to get it. This is what it looks like. The most I said when they fast, I will not hear Disobedience and how it looks. Ellie's sons. More. First Samuel 2, 12 through 14. Hallelujah. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not Yahuwah. And the priest's customs with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he, and he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all Yasharel that came thither. All of those that came into Yasharel, this is what the sons of Eli, Eli did. They did this thing to the offering. This was their custom. All right. Go ahead. And before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to the roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of you, but raw. It says before they burned the fat. Remember, the most high asked for it first. Before anybody got anything, you're supposed to give it to the most high. It says before they burned the fat, this is what they said. You give me this first. Let me get my, let me get my portion out real quick. Go ahead. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as your soul desires, then he would answer him, nay, but you shall give it to me now. And if not, I'll take it by force. Now, the people knew the Torah. These are people who knew what the word said. And they was like, look, man, we supposed to do this first. And they said, nah, if you don't give us what we got, man, look here, we finna 
We've been a strong on that. We want what we want first. Nah, because you finna burn, man, I see a little shoulder shank in there. I see a little, I see something that can come to the highs. That's going to be for me and, and, and number one and number two. That's going to be for the whole, the whole bundle. You know what I'm talking about? Go ahead, Maury. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before Yahuwah, for men abhorred the offering of Yahuwah. No, they abhorred the offering of Eli's sons. They abhorred the offering of Yahuwah. No, they abhorred the offering of Samuel. They abhorred the offering of Yahuwah. This was a Yahuwah's offering. They were so wrong in what they did, they caused the people of the land to abhor Draw near to the creator. What that sound like? I don't know. Tell me. Sounds like how our people are now. Come on. The priests, the pastors, those who have misappropriated the funds of Yahuwah, the offering of Yahuwah, have left a nasty taste in the people's mouth to the point to where they don't want to operate in kingdom giving. Kingdom giving. This is the economy of the kingdom. Go ahead. Uh, uh, huh? A boar is like, uh, check your Google machine. You but go. anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. A boar is like to despise, to detest, to to push it away, to disgusted not even draw close. It. Yeah, they were disgusted with it. They didn't even want to deal with it. But this was something that the Most High had set in place for his people to draw nigh to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I probably got a couple of more slides. Eli's sons continued. 1 Samuel 2, 27 to 28. And there came a man of Elohim unto Eli and said unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, did I plainly appear unto the house of your father when they were in Mitzrayim, in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Yasharel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of your father all the offerings made by fire of children of Yasharel? Now this man came before the priest of the time, and he said what the Most High wanted them to say. Did I not do this for your house? Did I not do that for your house? Did I not give you all of this that it would be for you? Did I not give to you graciously? Did I not do that? He says, to offer upon my altar? Man, for you to offer upon the Most High's altar was just like Abraham who built that altar to be a friend of Yah. Yah was, was going to accept it. He was going to draw nigh with you and he was going to be close with you. The altar was a place of exchange where we would be in communion with the father. I gave you this specific task so that me and you could be one-on-one. -on -one. We could be close. And you did this. Verse 29. Verse Samuel 2 and 29. Hallelujah. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice. Whose sacrifice? My sacrifice. Go ahead. And at my offering. Whose offering? My offering. It's all his, y'all. It's none of ours. It's all his. Go ahead, boy. Which I have commanded in my habitation. And honor your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Yasarel, my people. This is what the priests were doing at that time. And we see priests continually doing this. We see people who are in this position that continually do this and they pervert the offering and they misappropriate the funds. They're riding around in big Cadillacs. They're riding around in Lexuses and Bentleys. They got Teslas and they got houses with, with, with wood and gold and gold toilets and walking around with Gucci belts and they watch walking around with red bottoms. These are the people who the world has set up as your priest. They have perverted Yahuwah's offering. And look, not only are they perverting it, they showing it off. Look at what we doing. The most high is blessing us while you got people that's in your congregation that have need. Remember the reform of Hezekiah. He said there was so much that everybody had. It was in abundance to where everybody received that which the Most High called them to receive. This was the plan of Yah from the beginning that we would be at Kod, one with one another. Strong families, build strong communities, build strong nations. And guess what? Who's going to take us down when we're a strong nation? 
And on top of all that we got, we have the Most High, the King of the Universe. We have Yahuwah Zavaot who will fight for us. We have El Shaddai, the destroyer, who will destroy those who would come and try to get in our mix. We got the one that will come and take them out. They're trying to get in our path. This is what the Most High has designed for us. It's time for us to get back. Hallelujah. Back to the ways of the Most High. Hallelujah. Let me see. All right. I got a couple more slides. Do y'all got the point? Listen, if we got I'll go further if y'all want to. But I think I, I think we painted the picture to understand. This is what I'll do. We're going to go to Malachi. It says, for I am Yahuwah, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Yaakov are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not guarded them. The Most High is telling us, return to me and I will return unto you, says Yahuwah, as I'm old. Return to me, and I will return to you. But ye said, where shall we return? We still hear this with our people. How are we supposed to come? It don't take all that. Oh, so y'all Hebrews now. Oh, y'all worshiping on the Shabbat. Return to me, because we read that it is a sign between me and you and the world to show you that you're my people. Return to me and all of the ways that I have for you. Return to me. Now, this is how they perverted this uh, beforehand. Will a man rob Elohim? <laughs> this is the every mind. This was written by Mal Malachi, the messenger of Yah. Now, let's understand this from the every thought. Will a man rob Elohim? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, when have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Why, how did we do that? Why? Because we supposed to be, we supposed to be one with one another. We supposed to be elevated as a nation. And if we followed the way of God, we would lack nothing. We would lack nothing in everything that we do and how we draw near to each other. We should give each other our best. We should give Yah our best. Will a man rob Elohim? Yes. We as a people have come accustomed to robbing Elohim of his time. We come to accustomed to robbing him of what we're supposed to give to him daily. The fruit of our lips, our prayer. This is why it is a custom in Beth Torah when somebody say, can you pray for me? We don't wait. We pray. The fruit of our lips. Life and death is on, the power, on, on our tongue and we will eat the fruit thereof. Ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation, the offering and how you brought it, how your heart was, now you're cursed. And he says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now, herewith says Yahuwah's of our oath, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. This is in all things that we did. It don't have to be your money. It could be your time. It don't have to be your food. It could be in how you love on one another. But guess what? In everything that we do, it must be unto Yahuwah, and it must be perfect. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. I want your heart connected with me. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. It says, and I will rebuke the devourer. See the cans all on the floor? The, the devourer came. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says your whores of old. Corban, drawing near to our, our creator. Hallelujah. At this time, uh, we definitely, uh, I want to hear some people. Any questions, any comments, please, please, please. Um, even on the Zoom, is there anything that anybody would like to say? Anybody in the room? The floor is open. I see you, Akoti. You ready? I see you. You ready? It's brewing. I see it bubbling up. All right. Here you go. Um, 
when was the appropriate times they did all those different types of offerings? <laughs> that was service right there. Service right there. He said, when was the appropriate times? As we as we seen earlier, we seen that it was a continual offering uh, in the morning and the evening. Offerings were continually made. Then we seen that each encounter with Yah caused an offering. You understand? So there was never necessarily needed to be an appropriate time to offer unto the Most High. When the when the Most High came to your mind, spoke to you, and told you to do X, Y, and Z, and you did it, that was the appropriate time. There's never no appropriate time. If he wakes you up 3 o'clock in, in the morning and says, offer me the fruit of your lips. Offer it. Wherever the Most High, you meet the Most High at, you offer it. You build an altar and you meet and you, and you present the offering to the Most High. Hallelujah. The sin offering, okay, Moray Kanyasu said, how about the sin offering? Continually, as much as you think about what's going on in your life, and if you feel that you are out of step with the Most High, you continually offer the fruit of your lips for the sin offering. Abba Yahuwah, I've sinned in your sight. Please forgive me. I turn away from my wickedness, Abba Yahuwah. I turn my back to it, and I will not walk back to it, Abba Yahuwah. Now I'm going this way, closer to you. Draw nigh to me as I draw nigh unto you, as I give you my carbon as the fruit of my lips. Please, Abba Yahuwah, accept my prayer and my petition before you, that I not be out of step with you. Continually, Abba Yahuwah, keep me in your ways. Hallelujah. The peace offering, every time the most high, uh, you want to have, uh, what was it last time? What was it? What was the peace offering? I can't remember. It was to uh, to be in alliance with the most high. You offer your peace offering continually with the most high. Abba Yahuwah, I want to be in peace with you. Abba Yahuwah, thank you for all that you have done. And I present myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. May you accept the fruit of my lips, Abba Yahuwah. And may the words of my mouth, Abba Yahuwah, not be displeasing in your sight. May I be a pleasing aroma in your nostrils, Abba Yahuwah, as I present myself as a peace offering. As I present myself as an Ola offering. As I present myself, Abba Yahuwah, as a Minka offering, may you accept me and may I be in devotion with you. All of the offerings continually, continually. I knew you was going to come with them all. all right, go ahead. Go ahead. How do you know when your offering is acceptable unto Yahuwah? How do you know when your offering is? I'll tell you how I know when my offering is acceptable to Yahuwah. My life. Doors begin to open. People think I give an offering and I'm finna, I'm finna, my pocket's gonna get fat. Now nah, my house is in line. Me and my relationship with my Isha is good. Me and my relationship with my children are good. Me and the relationship with my ox and my occultes are good. And guess what? There can be chaos all around me. If chaos is all around me, I could be like Noah on the boat, on the ark, and there's water everywhere, but I have the peace of Yah. This is when I know that he accepts my offer because he has given me his perfect peace. This is how I know. Maury? Also, um, no one knows you better than you know yourself outside of the creator of the universe. You know whether your hands are clean. You know whether you've been in a, in a situation where you've uh, sinned or operating in sin or living in sin. You know your thoughts. You know the actions. You know what you do when no one's looking. If those things, when you do introspection, are before you and you know that the Most High Yah is unpleased with these actions, he didn't receive your offering. Mm. So you have to know Torah. You have to know what he expects of you who you are unto him and what you're supposed to be doing as the royal priesthood. And if you're not doing those things, he don't accept your offering. So introspection, prayer is self-judgment. Mm. If you're judging yourself daily, 
You don't know whether he uh, accepts your offer. And I used to ask my daughter, how'd you do on your test? I don't know. You know what you did on that test. You know if you if you got to question 20 and you ain't answered nothing from 20 to 30, you know if they wasn't right or not. We always know. You know. You know where your life is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Morey, I believe there's a question. Let me see if I can unmute you. I see the hand, Stokes family. We see the hand, so we're going to see if we can get you unmuted. Hallelujah. You should be able to uh, unmute yourself now and speak freely. Turn that USB uh, down a little bit. No, you're going to have to be speaking language. Right here. The USB now. Right here. Yeah. Thanks. A little bit. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, good. Um, I, it wasn't a question. I just wanted to um, just say, because he was asking for comments, that it just really brings it uh, just full circle and brings it to where um, just like you, like, I guess, the increasing the understanding of um, the word on, you know, how when the heart wasn't right, how, why the father would not accept uh, mm -hmm. the offering, like uh, with Cain and Abel, um, you know, it's it, like, you know, when you're reading it, it's like, well, what was he doing? You know, like be, before the bad thing that they did, you know, um, uh, like with um, Saul and stuff like that. It's like he knew where their heart was when they were offering and it wasn't where it was supposed to be. And so it just really makes that, you know, just even drives that point home for me. Hallelujah. 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 Remember, we want to deal with our hearts. One thing that I know and two things for sure. If my heart ain't right, your hood don't like. If your heart ain't right, your hood don't like. You like that, huh? Don't you? Don't you do it. Who's next up? Next up. When, when you were talking about making sure our heart was in the right posture, it just showed me how he created us. He created us as a to have free will. And he did that because he could have made us all have the right posture, our heart to be the right posture at all times. Yes. But he doesn't want that offering that is he sets up. He wants to see where our heart is positioned. And that's why he gave us the ability to have free will, to see how we're going to offer the things that he already gave us. It's not, like you said, it's not ours, it's his. What are you going to do with my stuff? Yeah. Are you going to give it back to me or are you going to hoard it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Give it back to get you. <laughs> Emma, 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 Deborah. Great teaching, Murray. Great teaching. So um, before I even came on this morning, I was listening to Moray, um, oh, I can't think of his name now, but he was talking about the Ten Commandments and the first commandment that thy shall love the most high, thy all he with all their heart and their soul and with all their mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thy shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And the most high put in my spirit as I was listening to this, are we genuinely loving our neighbor or are we just, I, let's see how, how he gave it to me was like in our workplace, uh, we have a supervisor that's not kind to us, but we're showing love to them. And then outwardly we're showing love, but inwardly we're thinking, I can't stand her or wow, she gets on my nerves, or he gets on my nerves. That is our heart. That is showing where our heart truly is. So I just think it's amazing that before we even got on today with your lesson about our heart posture, the Most High was showing me our heart because I know I'm, I'm guilty of myself. I'm guilty of it myself. And it just really brought it full circle for me that the Most High was showing me that we have to be genuine outwardly as well as inwardly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahusha said it like this. He said, uh, before you even bring your offering to the altar, go to your brother and make peace with him. You have to make peace with those that you are in communion with. Everything that we do must be pleasing to the most high. 
Hallelujah. Is there any more questions, any more comments? Hallelujah. I'll pray out. Shalom, shalom. Um, this this was a good teaching, um, always. But man, on our on my ride up to pick up my daughter from school, um, the question came up with my wife and I. We was um, talking about heart posture and having your heart in the right posture. So we um, we was going back and forward on the understanding of having your heart where it's supposed to be. Everything in Torah shows us the posture of our heart. It tells you how your heart is supposed to be based on you keeping the commandments, you following what Yahuwah tells you to do. When he asks something of you, you do it without question. That is your heart posture. Following what is what does says Yahuwah, no matter what, in spite of what it might feel like, in spite of how someone might think it looks, your heart posture is your obedience. Your heart posture is to uh, uh, fulfill the Torah, which is written before us, our instructions, our guide, our lifeline, our uh, provision is everything. So when we have our heart posture, I mean, to fulfill, I know your heart posture, you go to Torah. It tells you exactly what your heart posture is. So that's all I wanted to share. Shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. 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 Well, if there are no more questions or comments, I'll go ahead and uh, 